let me get started and thank you and, and welcome uh, to this uh, session today on preparing uh, information, education and communication materials. Um, my name is Thomas. Uh, in, in English, my name is Thomas. I am from a company called Rain Barrel Communications and I'm very happy to be working with you today and, and with Bridget and the, uh, the Pacific Rim College and, and the St. Vincent's Hospital and really all my friends here in Cambodia. And what we have today is a little bit of talk from my side and then we have more time for questions, answers, ideas, and what you can expect from me is that I will communicate with you. And this is uh, one of the principles of being developing good IEC materials. Think about always communicating with people, not to people. so stay. And this is just a little introduction to let you know that I have uh, lived in Cambodia for seven years. You can mm. see me there on the left, a little oh, bit younger. Too young, yes, uh, too young. In the yes. picture. <laughs> and, and if I am uh, not uh, mistaken, this was in Stong Treng in 2007. Mm, nice, yeah. It's and a nice place. when I worked with uh, health communication and the Ministry of Health actually in Cambodia before, this was one of the things that I worked with. I don't know if any one of you have ever come across this campaign, Nung Kai Di Mui. Uh, and this was a campaign and use of IAC materials to get women in for their first antenatal care visit within the first month. And uh, so my background for doing this in Cambodia is pretty extensive. And just to share that in my work, when we did the things right, we saw that within the first six months, there was 25% more pregnant women that came in for their ANC visit within the first month. So doing things right can make a big difference. So what are we talking about? Why are information, education, communication, uh, support materials, why are they important? Uh, first and foremost, they're important because they help us get the attention of communication participants. And again, I'm underscoring the people we communicate with, they are participating in the communication. And with that said, let me just hear, can everyone hear me clearly? Any yes. problems? No problem. It's very no, clear. No problem. Yeah. Even okay. in, in Cambodian language, <laughs> you speak very clearly. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think it's because of the sake. Um, okay, thank you. So it also gives us an opportunity to get together with people and connect with the heart and the mind. And this is important in communication because messaging is one thing, but how we come across is another. And often, in particular also in mental health, we have to explain some issues that may be very sensitive. And another thing is that when we have materials, especially if we can hand them out, they can help the people we communicate with to remember important information and ideas. So when we think about IEC materials, I think traditionally we think about print materials and audiovisual materials, but this training is very much also about how do we think about IC in the digital communication, 
in the digital world, in the digital space. And some of the IC materials that we can think of are websites and social media posts, but also mobile phone applications. Mm -hmm. So an IC material can be much more than a poster. Importantly, we have to remember that an IEC material cannot stand on its own. We have to develop IEC materials to be a part of a, a wider social and behavior change effort. And I will get into what I mean by that. We must co-create or think about co-creating the materials and use them together with the intended communication participants. We cannot think of IEC materials as something we produce and we distribute to targets, right? So there's a big difference between thinking about with and together and me for you. Mm -hmm. Now, what I mean by this is that when we communicate effectively, there are some things that we can always do. If we look at the left hand here, there are some principles to follow. The first one is to think about the communication as a two-way process and for people to participate. The second is that what we are talking about is linked to programs. You are working with mental health so services. You're working with mental health pro programs. So an example of this is we cannot communicate something that our programs cannot deliver. So we always have to think about our information takes place in a context where we are working within programs. We have to think about partnerships. Very often, we cannot achieve the results we want to achieve on our own. So partnerships with other departments, other sectors, the private sector, etc. And then we have to think about communication as a two-way process that takes place on a platform. So a platform can be a health clinic. It can also be a website. It can also be a radio station. And then we have to think about persistence. We have to be doing this for as long as it takes for us to see the social and behavior change we want to see, in particular around mental health addressing stigma, uh, providing services, helping people know where they can go and talk, etc. And on the right side, these are the steps that we normally do when we are effective. And we do that. I have done this for today. I have researched a little bit about who you are. I have planned my presentation. And then I have used input from Bridget and some of my knowledge to co-create the content, right? And now I'm communicating with you. And after this, we will evaluate. So these are principles to always consider. And you can use these two hands in your work afterwards as guiding principles and steps. Now, Going back to why I'm saying we cannot think of IEC materials as standalone materials, it's because mental health and any objectives we want to achieve, they take place in society. And in society, there are many layers that influence our feelings, our ideas, our ways of doing things. There's a need to communicate specifically with decision makers, specifically with organizations, specifically with communities, specifically with families, and specifically with the individual who may have a 
mental health issue or who is caring for someone with mental health. So we always have to think of our IEC materials as something that has to be relevant for the different people we're communicating with. Is this clear so far? Yes, it is, yes. Okay. So this example here is a IEC material that was co-created uh, at a time when I was working with uh, campaigning against gender-based violence. And we invited young people to create IEC materials. And this is just an example of an IEC material that is created together with the people we communicate with. In this case, it was a poster that depicts violence on the one hand and protection. And IEC materials, they don't need to have text necessarily. They can have. This is an example. I bring this example in because I know that a lot of the time we don't have a lot of money to produce materials. So this is an example that costs zero real or zero dollars because it was a participant who produced it and shared it for free. Now, the point about co-creation, meaning that we create it together, it's not about just saving money. As you can see from this chart, this was a campaign where we were engaging online with people. The red arrow shows the time we went out to people and said, will you co-create materials for this communication campaign? And what you can see is an explosion in the engagement in terms of likes, comments, and shares. And the point is that when we communicate with people, they participate, they are much more likely to pay attention. And the content is much more likely to be relevant and because they participate, they take ownership and they share it with others. This is important. So these are things to think about as principles. So what are some of the other factors that ensure the effectiveness of IEC support materials? For example, when we're doing interpersonal communication. First and foremost, we need to make sure that the words and the pictures we use, they're easy to see and to understand. Very often, it's a good idea to have captions. Explain what's in the photo because there's a lot of people who cannot see. So just because they cannot see doesn't mean they shouldn't understand what's in the photo. And another, is that the information we share should be very clear and unambiguous, or it should not create confusion. I'll tell you an example with antenatal care. At the time, some people were saying three antenatal care visits, other people were saying four, and other people were saying five. Cannot say that to people because you create confusion. So you need to be clear consistent. And when you use text, make sure that it's linked to the illustrations you use. For example, if you talk about motorcycles, but you have a photo of a car, there is something that doesn't match. So use of photos is really to tell a thousand words. And use of text is to be specific about actions and information. So some of the other factors that are good to remember, and this is one uh, IEC material maybe that I found on the internet from Cambodia. I'm not sure what it says because I never learned to read Khmer. 
But when we're doing IEC materials, it's good at least on one page, we focus on one theme, not many, many themes, not many ideas, not many actions. If we have a flip chart, one page is for one action because that way we can be clear. We also wanna make sure that we design materials to be appealing and captivating. And one way to do that is to keep them clean, not have too much text or too many pictures. Because when there's too much, it's hard to concentrate. So you may know the principle, less is more. This is a good one to also think about. And the language needs to be appropriate. This goes back to what I was saying. We speak one way to the decision makers. We speak another way to children, in particular in the Khmer language. So you cannot confuse how you speak with people because if you speak to a decision maker like you speak to a child, you will have panyaha, correct? And the other way, if you speak to a child like you speak to a decision maker, you will not be understood. So these are important things to think about. And of course, Cambodia is a country full of beautiful culture and traditions. So what we need to always think about is what we are saying, is this culturally appropriate? And are we clear? And what we are saying, is it credible? And are we saying it at the right time? For example, are we saying to people to go and get certain services that are not yet ready? They are not in place? then we have a problem because we're telling people to do something they cannot. We lose credibility. So these are some of the other factors that are important. Just um, on that other um, slide, yeah. Um, yes. Neil, is this, is this one of your materials that you use? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, go yeah, ahead. If, if I can say something, uh, actually this is the post uh, which we developed uh, and helped the Department of Mental Health uh, uh, with our team uh, to yeah to make it uh, during the start of the COVID uh, time, yeah, and then we were we have a lot more than this. I think around ten or eleven different posters, and we try to put it as fast as possible. But of course, that we haven't learned much about how to make it more effective and more communicable with our audience, yeah. So these are one of the posters that we made, uh, but in support to the uh, Ministry of Health, the, especially the, the Department of Mental Health, yeah. Well, thank you for clarifying that and, and congratulations for making them, okay? Because that is the first step. Doing it better over time, that's why we're discussing today, right? So I'm not in any way trying to compare, I just, found this and I could see that it was about mental health, but I didn't know what it what it said. So excellent. And and I'm um, just curious, is it about COVID or mental health or mental health impacts of COVID? Yeah, about mental health impact of COVID and focusing on the message to parents uh, to take care of their children, uh, especially small kids and adolescents during the uh, quarantine, uh, quarantine time. Yeah, it's like uh, what uh, behaviors or symptoms that they can be observed yeah and what can they uh, provide a care and support to their children yeah nice mm -hmm. yes excellent so let me just make one more point uh, before uh, we are almost done i'll just go back to this slide here hold on because uh, what we did here was we came up with a logo and a, and a tagline, right? 
And we did this. There was a lot more information, information about tetanus, information about HIV, information about nutrition, a lot of information. But we knew that the health workers, they could provide that information through counseling. So we didn't add that. We used the, the message to get people in. So sometimes it's a good idea to also think about how do you put certain messages for the health workers, certain messages for the carers, so that you don't put everything in one place. It's just to share the thinking here. Now, I have spent... Uh, possibly a little bit more than my time. And that those were some of the principles that I brought up in this presentation. And, uh, you know, I have put here my contact details. You're always very welcome to contact me if you want to discuss anything more. But for now, how do you feel? And let's talk. I'm okay. <laughs> Great. You know, yesterday Great. I joined uh, joined a uh, I think a workshop from uh, organized by the uh, Asian uh, Australia for Asian, and then uh, there was one presentation done by uh, Are You Okay? Uh, I think it's a team or organization as well. Yeah, it's a it's a nice uh, uh, word and nice um, expression to draw attention on the mental health. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, that is why it comes up with uh, this word. <laughs> I'm okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, and, and I think this is another example how just asking a question is the entry point for a conversation that can speak much more than a poster. But I'm not a mental health practitioner, so don't, uh, mm -hmm. you know, hold it against me. I, I don't know what to say necessarily in the situation, but communication wise, it's a good entry point. Mm. Yeah. So I, I think this is the time where everyone can join in and ask questions or share ideas. You know, I think Bridget and I are happy to learn as well. So if there's anything uh, you would like to share with us, go ahead, the floor is open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering if there's any um, questions about any material that Thomas presented, like anything that was um, not clear or um, or pretty good. And then I was kind of wondering, um, Neil, you mentioned the Are You OK as a campaign of asking people to, uh, to look out for each other. Is there any of this kind of mental health um, promotion in, in Cambodia already? Uh, actually, we've been doing uh, a lot, uh, but from different uh, sector, uh, different uh, uh, players. Uh, starting from uh, NGO, from the public sectors and the government, uh, the Department of Mental Health or the Ministry of Health. And recently, the uh, influencers through media, uh, something like that, we noticed uh, so far. And at the academic level, uh, we have been organizing, uh, we call it Mental Health Day at the university. And in 2019, our association uh, in uh, uh, collaboration and uh, organization with the Ministry of Health, especially the Department of Mental Health, the Department of Psychology, we organized the first uh, mental health conference yeah, uh, at the uh, University of Health Sciences. And it, it, part of the campaign, which we started to uh, work together and then to uh, raise more awareness in the country and some other NGOs, they've been doing a lot as well uh, at the community. So we can say like, um, uh, yeah, uh, from different uh, 
uh, parties, different players, but still a limitation and still lots of things need to be done uh, from now on. But uh, I noticed now that we need to provide something more effectively as well. Yeah, so learning from this uh, session, it's, it's interesting. Uh, personally, uh, I learned a very important message from Thomas is that we need to get uh, they involved with us as well. Yeah, even the uh, target group yeah, to make the material. Yeah, this is very uh, uh, good learning yeah, experience. Thank you. Welcome to you. I'm, I'm glad that it is helpful. Uh, I think that there's another question and I see there's a, at least a comment in the comment box, but I just wanted to share that we live in a world where influences are very important. And that is another good example where we can co-create, you know, where we can identify influences and give them some talking points and say, can you produce your own materials that can spread this word or these talking points? And very often people can do it very quickly, very cost efficiently, and you start having messaging shared. Um, Sorry, uh, I, I, I think there was uh, a, is it, are you there, Om? Are you uh, wanting to say something? Plugged in? <laughs> not yet, not yet. Uh, not yet, okay, it's just because you went in. Okay, good. There, there is a question I can see from uh, Subhanarit uh, about elaborating more on IC in relation to telehealth. So uh, let me share uh, my understanding of, of the question. Um, I think we can look at what we're doing right now as an example of telehealth. I know we're not doing help, but we're using the same tools. And when we're talking about telehealth, there are IEC materials that are related to finding our services. We can call these marketing materials, mm -hmm. marketing of our services. Then there are IEC materials that are relevant for when we are providing counseling services. I think very often we have things like flip charts. Do you have any flip charts on your services in Cambodia? Yeah. You have? Yeah. So in, in a telehealth situation, you can sit and show the material, but you can actually also like I just did, you can transfer your materials onto a PowerPoint so that you can share your screen that becomes you know, possible to see what's there. However, if you need to share and explain and use your fingers, I suggest just use the materials as you are. And then there are materials we could call leaflets, follow-up materials that we can hand out to people after the counseling, or after the provision of the services. This is what you should remember. This is where you should go. Or these are some of the uh, principles you can use. Or these are some of the people to talk with. If you can package that in a flyer, in a brochure that is available in a digital format, you can share that after your counseling, right? Mm -hmm. So there's different types of IEC materials for different purposes in telehealth. And that's how I understand the question. Does that help or, or am I, do you, are you looking for something else, Savanri? I think um, for telehealth, one of the big things that we use is 
fact sheet. So when somebody uh, is becoming unwell or comes into hospital and it's the first time they've ever thought of this or their symptoms are very, um, you know, it's new for them, we would give fact sheets. And often we don't use it from the hospital. The hospital doesn't create their own. <laughs> so we use often NGO or someone else's fact sheet. So we might use, um, you know, a, an NGO that has a um, material that's written by people with schizophrenia to explain schizophrenia. So we find that people are more, more likely to go away and read or to, to need more stories going over rather than that first hit of that hospital. So I'm sure Cambodia has the same thing, which is Dr. Google, where you look up your problem and see what is the problem and all the other people telling you what is the problem. So we try to make sure that we have good IEC to offer um, when this happens. You know, we might like to uh, point them to directions that we like, such as, um, you know, the, the government agency or an NGO that we trust. Yes. And I, I think it's a very good point to have good fact sheets that are relevant and are ready to, put, to be shared. Because I think one of the challenges in the digital world, Dr. Google, as we know, can be very unsettling because it can be difficult to know what information can we use, what can we trust, what can we not trust. So things that are coming with the stamp of the Ministry of Health in Cambodia is usually, in my experience, something that can be trusted. Uh, it can come from partners as well, but as long as it's also got the stamp of the uh, Ministry of Health, in my experience. Um, agree with that. So, yeah. Sorry? No, I totally agree with that. Just would like to emphasize that, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, and um, uh, another uh, thing to, to share in, in relation to that, um, I, I think I lost my train of thought. It will come back, but I, I think I lost it because there's a follow-up question here is, based on my work experience in Cambodia, what is the best way to convey the message? Is it using more writing letters or pictures or video? I, I think the answer is it depends. So if we're talking about the public, I think the public are most likely going to be engaged by video and pictures. Whereas decision makers, and policymakers may more likely be engaged in writing. So this goes back to the idea that we need to be very clear about what is the purpose of the IEC material, who is it for. But if we're talking about people with mental health issues, I would imagine and I base this on my experience, not on research uh, on that. And I, I suggest you do some research by asking people you work with. But I'm imagining that most of them will say video, then pictures, and not so much text. The, yeah, yes. I, I agree. I, I was looking even at the pictures that we have shared here on our Zoom pictures and um, looking, Hong Nesim, the picture of the sun and the, the tree, you know, as, as the sun coming up is very evocative. Yes. But our work, sometimes when I think about our work, what is the information that people mostly want to know is like what is this medication what is it doing what should I know what should I think about and it's it, it's not possible to send a video for um, some of this information or it's difficult to make a picture um, clear true 
and maybe part of the answer here is for us to always think about a communication process starts with attention. So sometimes we need a video or a picture just to grab the attention of people. And then we can follow up, as I suggested, maybe with a fact sheet, right? And of course, when we're talking about specific things like which medication should I take? I think it's hard to prepare fact sheets about every possible scenario, right? Every possible situation. So a lot of a lot of the communication is not about the material only. It's about the follow up. It's about the interpersonal communication. It's about the counseling. It's about the the notes and the follow up. So this goes back to my emphasis, never think of IEC materials as standalone materials that can make a difference. They are used by you in a context and they require introduction and they require follow-up. Mm. I was wondering, Thomas, when you're preparing these materials, how might you come up with um, the key messages um, do you have any advice for people who are not used to marketing to, you know, to, to work some of these ideas? Yes. Uh, so if we go back to some of the principles that I shared, keep it simple. One key message at a time. And what we do is we write out the message. So it's very important that we know what we want to do. Can you give me an example of an outcome on, of a key message? Could you give me, me that? Anyone here? So what is the key message you would like to tell yeah. some client? Yeah, what, what, give me an example. Yeah, what's the key message? I can come up with one, but I, I think you are better positioned. <laughs> uh, give me a sec. Hello. Yep. Yes. I, I, I guess, uh, yes. Maybe, yes, uh, something like uh, Neil said, uh, uh, like he's a friend here that uh, Cambodian known as uh, we call Jarak or Chukut is a uh, a disease that can be treated uh, so that people will, will stop going to traditional healer or some uh, a spiritual teacher or something. So how would you say that? So, uh, Sovandri, can you uh, just repeat, how would we what? Uh, we, we want to encourage people with schizophrenia to go to see the doctor rather than to uh, that is not healer. Okay, yes. Because um, people still believe that it is a black magic. Yes, yeah, yeah, I, I understand. So a, a good place to start would be to, because this is the same situation we have for women giving birth at home, traditional birth attendance, right? Or women uh, being roasted uh, in bed after delivery. When we have these um, traditions or beliefs, it's important that we sit down and talk with people. This, this is, I have no message, my, my, I have a process. You talk with people and say, what makes you think that this is uh, evil spirits. And then you find out by asking, if I told you this is not evil spirits, but this is a mental health condition, how can I say that to people like you so that you understand what I mean? 
that is co-creation of the message because now you are listening to them and their ideas about what to say. And when you know what they suggest, you can use your medical background to make it even more clear. So let me give you an example about vaccination. When people say that they don't want to be vaccinated against COVID because they don't trust the vaccine, or they say COVID is not a problem. I don't know if this happens in Cambodia, but it happens all over the world. When people say that, it doesn't matter you tell them that it's not true, that science mm -hmm. is proving that there's no problem. What matters is that you sit down and talk with them and find out where are you getting that information from. And very often you will find it's because they are looking at certain social media platforms and we're talking about schizophrenia. Maybe it's coming from the village, traditional village leaders. Now you need to talk with them to find out how to mm. change the message. And this is a process. It requires going to people and being using your communication skills. And then you develop the message. And when you have a new message, you pre-test it. You test it with people and say, if I say this to you, what do you get out of it? And when they get out of it what you want, that's when you have a message that you can use. I know this is not an easy answer, but I hope it makes sense because this is about having messages that people can understand and use, not about having messages that are technically correct. Does that answer your question? I am, and there's a question there from Steve Leith as well. And I think it's a real um, dilemma that we are in, in that our messages are complex and have a deeper, um, yeah, a deeper message underneath. So if you're talking about vaccine, I mean, mental health is one of the most discriminated against illnesses in every country, including our own. And so, yes. you know, we're not going to fix it with one message. And that's right. Maybe, yeah, maybe you're right saying, going back to people and saying what would be a helpful message and, and testing a few helpful messages. Um, but uh, Sivlipa has brought up a question about... Um, Using uh, real uh, photos, uh, symbolic photos, cartoon pictures sure. to try and grab attention from people for complex issues. I, I just want to take the opportunity to emphasize something you just said there, Bridget, and I hope is clear. We cannot consider IC materials and stand alone, and we cannot consider messages as the only thing. We have to look at our messaging and materials in a systematic process that looks at communication, how does it address the traditions, the social norms, and the knowledge? That's my point. And, and so anyway, uh, I, I, we could talk a lot more about this. This is why I have written my email address. Feel free to write me if you want to follow up. So back to the questions. Um, healing your past trauma to be better meant to you. And there is, okay. While some Cambodians are not familiar with the pictures or slogans, do you have any suggestions to improve it? Um, which, which pictures and slogans are we talking about improving? Hello, I think it is, yes. it is, from, it is from me. No, yes. Because, uh, from from what I see on your slides, sometimes like just us, uh, with uh, many that the woman got a domestic violence. Just for now, the picture. Yes. Picture, uh, 
have another person hold it and and then yes because uh it, it seemed like when 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 i look at the 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 picture that artists they draw and then i don't really understand the meaning behind and for for us for cambodia it's not easy to understand such a thing i mean just for me or maybe for more that more maybe many people is there yes. any way that we can improve it because uh because sometimes uh, when I don't really understand, but other people from abroad, easy to understand because they are familiar with such a thing. But for, for me, like I had no idea what, what was the meaning behind. So like before now, just before now, the picture that you saw in your slides. Yes. Uh, if I don't really get explanation from but you, no. maybe it's not easy for me to understand. I, I understand. So yeah. just to, to be mindful that I used the example it's from a different country. And the purpose was to share how you can co-create things together with other people. So if this had been a, a Khmer uh, drawing, maybe, maybe it would have been different. But some of the principles that are in my presentation, yeah. they are about being clear and being culturally appropriate. So if we are talking about schizophrenia, and I cannot remember the Khmer expression, people in Cambodia, they use the same expression. They talk about that expression. So you already know what they say about that expression. So for example, in, in, some, in some countries, schizophrenia is understood as many different personalities, right? I see. I see. So in some countries, if you show different personalities, people will immediately think about schizophrenia. I'm not saying that's wrong or right. I'm saying you need to look at the situation and how people talk about it so that you can come up with the right idea on how to communicate with them. Does that help you? Yes. Yes. And yeah. I, I know this is not easy. This is why I'm going to say one thing. This is a communication back and forward. It's about yeah. communicating and improving and communicating and improving. You cannot just have one perfect message. You send it and everything is perfect. That's yeah. not how it is. Yeah. So don't be afraid to learn and improve. Can I um, share some things when we were communicating on our program, when we communicated with colleagues, um, the Australian aesthetic, what we liked, um, sometimes it, it fits with what you were saying, Dom, there's lots of white space, a picture, a simple text, and people were looking at our marketing and saying, it's very boring, <laughs> it doesn't fit our idea of um, an attractive program for us. It needs to have more action, more, you know. So it's true. There are definitely cultural expectations of what is active or what is attractive or what is um, clear communication. So yeah. we had to test our marketing materials with who do we want to read them? Because we got approval from our hospital, but our hospital doesn't want to be our partner. So we had to go back to find another person to get approval from. And that was our target audience, which was from a different culture. Yes. And, and it's, it's, it's a very common uh, practice yeah. to speak, communicate before we test what we want to say. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, let me just share here. There's a question. Should we use real photos or symbolic photos or cartoon pictures? When I worked in Cambodia, we were out asking families that question. And they said, please don't use cartoons because it's not real for us. Mm -hmm. And they also said, please do not use photos about people from Thailand. That's, they're not Khmer. We don't want to see people from Thailand. 
So the point being here, you have to sit down and talk with people and find out what is going to be the best way for you to pay attention to this. And I think most of the time, if we're talking about real life issues, such as mental health, real photographs, not cartoons. Can I share another bit? When we were doing some work for the hospital, um, it, it's hard to get a client who would like to have their photo taken. So we would often use our staff members and ask them, would you like to play a role? And yeah. we would describe counselling or show what it was that we wanted to yeah. do. We would do role plays or, you know, sitting down talking to someone or showing what counselling would look like and taking photos of our staff with permission of our staff rather than with clients and families, which it was too sensitive. It was too, they were too uh, distressed at the time to do that. But as the pictures got going, then people liked the, some of the pictures and felt, okay, if it is good quality, then we are happy to be, um, have our photos taken. So we now have more images with clients rather than having to use um, staff as clients. Yeah. yeah. And, and maybe this is a good time to say you have to be respectful of how you take photos of who you put in your photos. And if it's a very sensitive topic, maybe you don't show people's faces clearly, etc. Which brings me to another important issue is be respectful about the issue. You know, in some countries, if we're talking about mental health, people think, oh, then we need to use a photo of someone who looks really, really mentally sick or, or sad mm -hmm. or distressed. But that sends a very, very specific message in itself. And very often we get much further when we are showing positive ways of communicating the message. Someone in a happy counseling session is much more likely to create the feeling, oh, I want to go to counseling, than mm. someone who is feeling distressed. So just think about always be respectful of the way that you use photos. Yeah. We only have a few more minutes. Is there yes. anything else um, urgent that anyone would like to, to ask? Mm. Just uh, checking, if, if checking I, the thing can, again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Have a short small question to Thomas as well since he uh, has a lot of experience in the country uh, yeah I think uh, making the material uh, going out uh, first uh, from from us and then uh, uh, bring it out sometimes uh, we need some budget and I was very interested the way that you try to help it out without costing a lot of money or without paying any money so from yes. your experience um, which uh, methodology or which uh, way that we uh, can use to, uh, uh, I mean, to save the money um, economically, don't need to use much money, but we still can create uh, the material for the target group. Yeah. Did, did, did you get my question? I, I, I get your, your point. So you. uh, this is just an example. You saw the hands that I showed you. They were designed by a colleague's daughter yesterday in the United States for free. But they were not just designed for fun. They were designed because I had a clear idea about them, right? And I have the opportunity to brand it. So these are the important things. If you go through the ministry and that's important, you need to make sure that you get the approval of the ministry. But the people who can design it, sometimes there are young people or NGOs with a budget. I think it's all a question of calling people and saying, we need these materials. 
can you help us? That's one way. So as long as you remember the formal process, and I know this in the ministry is very important, you need to get it approved. But as long as you get it approved, you can get a lot of people to do a lot of things for free of very, very low, low cost. That's one way. The other way is, of course, for you to work it into your budget and to contract professional producers who will help you. And I say this, it's better to work with people who know what they do than to work with people who is going to put together a poster that nobody will look at. Mm. Yeah. And I don't say that in a bad way. I say that in a very practical way. And when I, I hope that answers your question. So these are, you know, I think some of the ways to, to move forward. And there's another just quick thing I want to say. I have seen many, many times, not only in Cambodia, but also around the world. And I'm sure it happens also in Australia. We spend a lot of time and a lot of money on doing a very nice poster or a very, very nice TV spot. The poster, it never gets up on the wall. It's lying over in the corner. Or it gets on the wall on a door that opens and closes and someone opens the door and now the poster cannot be seen. And that door doesn't get closed. Or we have a very nice TV spot, but we don't have money to put it on TV in prime time. So we show it at four o'clock in the morning when nobody is watching TV. This is not effective communication. And these are some of the things we have to think about also. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's very helpful. I, I, I hope it is. Thank you so much. Obviously, this is a very uh, start of a conversation that, you know, where, where to go. I'm just going to throw up a quick feedback poll. Thank you for any feedback. And as always, you're welcome to send me any questions or um, Thomas is, um, is, is very generously given his email too. So if you have any further questions that come up afterwards and Again, if there's things that you would like to think about, we are up to um, about halfway, so we still have time. If there's anything you want to discuss, if you flag it early, we can uh, we can make sure it's in the in the materials and the presentations. Um, and thank you so much for coming in on your holidays. I hope you go on and have a very lovely afternoon and time off. Thank you to you, Bridget, always, and also to Thomas, especially today. And also uh, wishing our uh, colleagues and friends having a good holiday here. <laughs> okay, thank Absolutely. You. Thank, thank you so much, thank Thomas. Thank you time. so much from, from my side. And thank you to all of you for working with mental health. Uh, I really appreciate it on behalf of everyone who needs your services. Thank you. Thank you. That's true. <laughs> thank you.